apartment. The world is peaceful and serene. You can stay in the moment forever. <laughs> or you can wake up now. Now, now, now. First day of culinary school. No time to sleep in. Alright, chat. Let's, let's test this out. I'm going to pull up and chat. Hit one or two, depending on what you want me to do. stare at the ceiling thinking about everything that awaits you at Aegis University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Your mind begins to wander. Alright, I'm gonna have to give it a little bit longer time, I guess. There's a little bit of delay there. Alright. <clears throat> so, who will be there? What will you cook? I gotta turn this pole off. Finish the pole. At the pole. Alright, we're gonna try this one more time. Alright. They want to know who will be there. What will you cook? What should you wear? Time to begins to fly by, and you find your imagination away from you. So we a you'll need to take this seriously. Two, you allow yourself to daydream about thinking about the future. chat remember we're trying to we're trying to hook up with the colonel here so all right we're split we need one more tie two and two <laughs> what a blue fox punctuality is sexy <laughs> oh you know what with that comment you're gonna you're winning what we're doing all right we're hiding that pole you need to take this seriously. Cinema Lufkin, I better make sure to arrive prepared for the first day. Bust through your morning checklist, teeth brushed, hair combed, pits deodorized. <laughs> Nothing can stop you now. You confidently grab a biscuit, strut out the door, and head off the class. <laughs> Just what you need to get your blood flowing. This game is ridiculous. I'm in love already. <laughs> oh god. Alright. Standing in the quad, you gaze upon the magnificent University of Cooking School, Academy for Learning. Here comes your lifelong best friend forever, Miriam. She's the most adorably awkward person you've ever met, and you're absolutely love her for it. Good morning, Cinema Lovekin. Are you excited for the first day of the rest of our lives? Actually, I'm... Because I'm sure am. I did a little nervous. Okay, okay, a lot nervous. Cinema Lovekin, what's the... I didn't know I was going to be reading so much. Good lord. Uh, all right. Miriam. It's just that. In the morning, I had breakfast for myself, but, well, when I ate it, I couldn't taste any love in the food. <laughs> what if I'm no good? What if I fail? I hate it when there's no love in my food. Uh, <laughs> classic Miriam, raised by master chef parents. She's always held herself to a very high standard. Ever since we were little babies playing together, you rescued me from that quicksand box. It's been clear to me that you're all, you're the most loving, caring person I know. You're going to do great. <laughs> Miriam. But the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning's famous three-day early semesters, I'm afraid of being left behind and never catching up. Alright guys, we're in for three days. Sweet girl, Miriam has always had a flair for the dramatic. Summer, she got us so nervous about her first kiss that she kept a tooth practicing on a mannequin? <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Alright chat, did you pep talk her or should you change the subject to give her some relief? Alright chat, what are we doing? Pulls up. Game is 
Thank you. <clears throat> Holy shit, chat. We keep splitting. We're a very indecisive group. There we go. Looks like we are at number one. Pep talk your best friend. I'm a love kid. Remember last month when we saw the fortune teller and had our tarot cards read? The lady with the mask who gave me nightmares? I've been trying to forget. I know she looks spooky, but she's so sweet. I told you that you were destined for great things. Remember that card with the fancy looking tower and that other card featuring the handsome fellow in the red suit? I've been waiting for long to meet a handsome fellow I could call my own. <laughs> I'm sure you will soon. In no time, we'll be graduating and you'll be delighting the world with your heartfelt cooking in no time at all. As you talk to Miriam, as you, whoa, talk Miriam up, you can feel her nerves beginning to ease. <laughs> Bet you ain't gonna make it. Miriam, you know what? Maybe everything will be okay after all. And if not, at least I have these killer bangs. Bangs are killer. Can you believe I cut them myself? You can definitely believe it. I, uh, I cannot believe it. Before you can get another word out, you're rudely interrupted when someone smacks the books, custom engraved measuring spoons out of your hands and onto the ground. Hey! It's Ashley. <laughs> Ashley, your arch rival. She's totally evil. She can't help but be filled with jealousy. She can get anything she wants and she knows it. He is thick. Hello, Ashley. Oh, I didn't see you there, chicken shoots. <laughs> chicken shins. <laughs> you leave cinema love getting shins alone. They are perfectly normal shins. <coughs> oh, you can't stand Ashley. Even her name is annoying. You know for a fact that it's actually Ashley, but she can she had to add extra letters to make herself feel better than everyone. <laughs> If anyone here knows what perfect shins look like, it's us. We're not going to let you or your weird insults. Across the quad, you see Ashley's best friend, Van Van the Man Man. What the hell? I stopped to look at his own reflection in the mirror. His pants are so tight, you can see him casually working out his glutes while he styles his hair. No lie, they're rocking glutes. I... Him, Van Van. You rang? You've never been sure that the arrangement is, but as long as you know them, Ashley and Van Van have just been as close as you as Miriam. Subst substantially more devious. I can't believe that the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning never allowed people like you to attend as students. <laughs> I know, right? You'd think they'd just hand out our or hand us the, our diplomas now. I can't even read them having so much fun. Van Van, or well maybe hire us on the professors. You amateurs can learn a lot from us. With the first day of school about to start, there's just not time to properly tell these two off, so you resist the urge. Then my love can. Let's go, Miriam. Psh, see you later, loser. <laughs> As you approach the door, you see a goofy looking kid pushing hard against the window directly next to it. <laughs> <laughs> His name's Pop. Uh, oopsie. I think it's broken. He reached forward and easily pulled the door open. Ah, uh, that should do the trick. I love you. I think you mean thank you. My name is Pop, and I was named after my Pop Pop. He's old. <laughs> Someone like this also be a student at the school? He must be one heck of a chef. Also, his name tag clearly says Bob, but I guess he's reading it upside down. <laughs> <coughs> oh my god. Hi, Pop. I'm Cinema Lovekin. So, are you going to make me hold this door all day? Nope. And with that, the young man walks into the building ahead of you. Is it just me, or is he kind of cute? I think it's just you. Both shrug your shoulders before following him into the building. 
stand at the edge of the room, unsure where to sit. Other students wander in and keep themselves busy chit-chatting. Oh my god, a scruffy-looking pooch takes his place at the podium at the front of the class. Adorable. His name's Sprinkles. <laughs> now, now. Quiet. Now, now, quiet down, everyone. I'm trying to give him, like, Scruff McGruff voice. Who is this unreasonably cute pup and why is he in our culinary class? You must be Sprinkles, head instructor of the CEO of UCSAL. Please call me Professor Dog. I may be cute and little and fluffy, but I still demand respect, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> what? A cute dog is our professor? This is the best school ever. I guess only a dog's nose is capable of picking up all the nuances of fine dining. Out of nowhere, wind begins to rush around it. <laughs> As you swirl a cherry blossom, petals fill the air inside the classroom. I'm chilly. Somebody close the window. <laughs> and then... He walks in. You're immediately swept up in the aura of his new student as a remarkable goatee. You knew anyone could be so handsome. I'm standing still. Guys, it's getting pretty thick in here now. <laughs> oh, the colonel. It's him, it's... If it isn't my favorite student, Harlan. <laughs> Colonel Sanders interrupts Sprinkles. Sorry, Professor Dog, before he can finish his sentence. Please call me the Colonel. <laughs> colonel Sanders. <laughs> Nightbot, quit. Oh, man. I'm gonna need to get rid of this Nightbot in chat. It's freaking, freaking being a jerk. All right, anyway, Colonel Sanders. A hushed murmur rolls through the classroom as Colonel Sanders walks down the aisle of desks. Suddenly, the room is sweltering. Sweat begins to beat across your brow. You feel like everyone is looking at you, and you're not entirely wrong. <sighs> Ashley, and this is over here, must be sweaty, sweats a lot. Aha! Maybe we should open that window back up before faucet pitch melts into a puddle and evaporates entirely. Hold on just a second. Nobody talks to my friend like that. You two both know my name. We were in the same kindergarten class. But what is it with all your really weird insults? Besides, when Cinema Love can sweat, it's not gross. It's beautiful. Look at that shimmer. <laughs> <coughs> oh, we don't have a choice. We got to clean ourselves up, chat. It's a good thing you didn't forget about that deodorant this morning. This classroom is hot, hot, hot. Oh, God. Professor Dog steps into the settle of the class down and sets some ground rules. Welcome to the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. <laughs> the greatest culinary academy in the world. Oh, I can't handle myself. The birthplace of culinary legends, past, present, and future. Many challenges await you. There will be tears. There will be blood. There will be even really adorable tiny food. And when all is said and done, there will be a battle. <laughs> you will lift your spots and compete in the broom cooking arena. Just then another student enters the classroom and interrupts the professor's rousing speech. <laughs> Hi guys, sorry I'm late. I hope everyone had a good summer. I really missed. <laughs> Quiet. <laughs> I'm losing my mind here. Late to class is bad enough, but interrupting my monologue? You're one of the fast track out of here, young man. Are you sure you're even in the right place? I don't recognize me. This is my third year in school, so is my teacher. Everyone stares at him blankly. Does nobody remember me? I'm... You're expelled if you utter one more word before I finish. Let that be a lesson to you students. The tardiness is unacceptable. See that? Good thing we were on time, chat. Even Clank made it here on time, rolling halfway across town on his tiny wheels. The hell? You turn to see Student, Mc student Sprinkles is referencing, who appears to be some sort of industrial kitchen appliance. Clank. <laughs> the class bursts into laughter. Oh, Clank, you rascal. Sprinkles walks into the classroom. As everyone stands in silent obedience, when he gets to you, he lifts his nose into the air and takes a deep sniff. Hmm, your diet is lacking. Perhaps some of what I'm picking up here, you definitely need a multivitamin. You should be taking better care of yourself. Oh, 
Oh god. <laughs> you've never you've never had a talking dog as a teacher before, but Sprinkle's reputation for being smart but tough is well known. Oh shit. Alright, chat. Oh, I gotta keep I gotta keep remembering to hide this pool. Alright. Uh what do we feed him? One, two, three. Start the pool. What are we feeding this guy, chat? You decide to try and butter him up by giving him a treat from your pocket, but what kind? A beef treat, a rubber ball, or a chicken snack? Everybody's going beef treat and you got you guys do know I'm trying to get the kernel here, right? But it's fine. Everybody's going beef. We're going beef 66% says beef. I mean can't argue those you Reach beneath your apron and return with a small bit of beef jerky in your hand <coughs> Sprinkles eyes go wide as he locks onto it Beef are you trying to give me a heart attack? I'd never eat that. Chat! Chat, what have you done? You've angered, you've angered the teacher. You clearly do not belong here. Please remove your apron and then remove yourself from this class in this school. Chat, did we just... We just lost. Chat. Chat, seriously? Come on, guys. We're better than this. Try again. I'm not reading all that again. I'm <laughs> just letting everybody know. All right. Okay. All right, the Colonel's sexy, I get it. All right, there's the big stupid man. All right, clean yourself up. Yep, nerdy guy. Nobody likes him. Not even the teacher. Alright, talking robot. Alright, chat. <laughs> Clearly you can't be trusted. Chicken snack. You reach beneath your apron and return with the chicken snack in your hand. Sprinkle's eyes go wide as he locks onto it. His favorite. Well, well, well. I think there might be some competition for a new star student. Furry professor immediately devours the snack, leaving your hand slick with a coating of warm doggy drool. See the other students eyeing you jealously, but pay no mind to them. If they wanted to succeed in life, they would have learned the importance of carrying a range of dog treat flavors on them at all times. Settle down, young chefs. Take your seats and prepare to have your minds open to the amazing possibilities of culinary creation. Why is the colonel so, so sexy? Blindfold, clearly you've not known the colonel for the last 30 to 40 years. He's always been sexy. <laughs> uh, as everyone rushes to claim their favorite seats, you're left standing at the front of the room. Only two options remain. Hey, Cinema Love Kim, there's still a seat here. <clears throat> it seems that no one claimed the seat next to me if you're interested. Alright, chat. Here we go. Where do we sit? Start the poll. Looks like we're learning. Looks like chat. Looks like chat's learning. Willie's Willie's bros before hoes. <laughs> Ooh, Steamblood's also bros before hoes. <clears throat> oh, we're tied here. Steamblood, you can't be voting twice. Two different accounts. That doesn't count. Jerk. <coughs> Alright. Since he cheated, we're going to one. <clears throat> Steamblood asshole. Alright. Step by the Sanders. Move to take your seat by Colonel Sanders. It appears he brought no books, pens, or pencils. 
However, his perfect upright posture shows off his seriousness and makes you confident in his desire to learn. Thanks for offering me the seat. I've only had two roles. Do all you can and do it the best you can. And the only way you're ever going to get the feeling of accomplishment is something. That's so inspiring. A little off topic if you ask me, but okay. As soon as you've settled into your seat, the professor makes an announcement. Those forearms. <laughs> Think fast, it's time to for a pop quiz. Yay, a quiz about me! This incredibly important and surprisingly short quiz will tell me you're ready for a life culinary school. Keep your knife sharp and your focus sharper. Here comes question one. Alright. If a train A is traveling to point B and train B is traveling to point A, how important is it to wash your hands before cooking? Oh god. Uh, how important washed. One, two, three. And the pull is open. Meh. Depends. Extremely looking at you, Pop. Doesn't matter at all. I really appreciate that Willie USA is trying to help me strike out. <laughs> How funny would it be if they programmed this game that Mad Depends is the answer? And that's what gets you in, in the sheets with the kernel. I would just be like, hey, the KFC, we only wash our hands sometimes. <laughs> oh God, this game is too much. <clears throat> Look up mixed sprinkles. Dirty hands are so hot. <laughs> All right. Sounds like washing hands is pretty important. That's right. God, we're, we're rapid firing questions. Forest is the tree as chicken is too. Alright, chat. Questions up again. Uh, chicken is the feather. Night vision goggles, a slam dunk. Blindfold is all about that feather's life. His chicken is too. Give it two more seconds. Okay, chat. We think it's the feather. That's right. Oh god, there's so many. Alright. What is the most efficient eating utensil ever created? A comically oversized Fork, meat tenderizer, or a spork? Hmm. What utensil? Let's see what our KFC fans are out here. One for comically oversized fork, two for meat tenderizer, three for spork. Oh, dude, spork with a landslide. Rickabunkers goes for four for F. Um, okay. <laughs> Work it is. That's right. Oh my God. What food is best for a broken heart? Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. Camel meat. Pancake that looks like a silly face. All right, pulls up. Rick bonkers, if you want three, you just have to hit it once. There you go. Anything as long as it's prepared with love and not too much salt. I would argue camel meat, but I don't get a vote in this. Pancake what looks like a silly face. We got a tie here, chat. We need we need somebody to sway their vote here. We got six voters, we got what nine nine people uh, watching? Somebody's got to want to vote. All right, 
we're leaving it a tie. I'm gonna throw my vote up here for anything as long as it's prepared with love. That's right. Oh God, Sprinkle's a good boy. <laughs> no, talking dog that teaches the culinary school. He's the best boy. Yes. Hey chat, how good of a boy is he? Is he, the, is he a bad boy? Is he the best boy? Or is he... Yes. Blindfolded suggests much wow. <laughs> Alright. Guess we're stopping it in that. Is the best boy that's right total score is five out of five chat give yourselves a round of applause he did it <clears throat> wow be honest did you cheat you look up to see the, the colonel standards has been watching you tally your score he's impressed i know we just met but i have to confess i think you have a beautiful brain Hot diggity, Cinema Lovekin, you just scored some major Colonel Sanders points with that performance. Oh, chat, we're hitting first base here soon. May I have your attention, students? I have an important announcement to make. Time for lunch! Wow, the cafeteria is as nice as any restaurant you've ever eaten at. Makes sense that a school dedicated to cooking would also be serious about eating. <coughs> a delicious fragrance wafts through the room and tickles the end of your nose. Your mouth waters. You smell that? That must be our lunch. It smells crazy good. Everyone, can I have your attention? Is it about lunch? No, I just wanted to apologize for my tardiness. You see, I was. Howdy, folks. I'd like to make an announcement. Hey, I was. It's about lunch. Everybody cheers. But, uh. Shh. Lunch, lunch, lunch. He said, shh. In honor of the new semester, I prepared something special to share with everyone for lunch. Aha! Uh -huh. That must be the smell I smelled. Indeed, that smell. Hold your breath, waiting to see what food this mysterious student has created. Heard that he's very talented. Were the rumors true? Ah, uh, that... He doesn't skip, uh... He doesn't skip arm day, does he? Or... Is this? Colonel Sanders lifts a large bucket above his head. Its contents glimmer in the light. Chat, I want you just to breathe this chicken in. Mmm, take it in. Oh. Out higher, huge pieces of chicken breaded and fried to a crispy golden finish. The aroma envelops you and you begin to feel warm and safe. Colonel Sanders has filled a bucket with chicken? What a novel concept. Your stomach begins to grumble as if to say, stop thinking and start eating. For years, I have been developing a secret recipe for the perfect fried chicken. By my calculation, nothing less than 11 herbs and spices are required to achieve this perfect balance of flavors. I think we all need to go and get some KFC tomorrow. You look around and notice that every other student has a pen and paper and is scribbling notes as fast as they can. But that's all I say about that. What? You think you... You think we want your stupid recipe? Dude, show uh, Nah, my dude, nah. I'm just, uh, drafting a last will and testament. It's, uh, one of those ingredients is, uh, poison. Got him! He looks around nervously to see if anyone else is laughing at his sick burn. You wait to see what Zinger Ashley has prepared to follow up, but she suddenly takes a different approach. Yeah, and I was, like, like, writing in my diary. Dear diary, today I smelled something beautiful. I knew at the moment that only the hands of a true gentleman could fry chicken so tender. See her body language change from bitter and evil to sweet and innocent as she slides closer to Colonel Sanders. She realizes that he is destined for greatness and fame with cooking skills like this. Wants him all to herself. Oh shit, we got we got our uh, mm. our competition here. Oh please. Mm. Well, Van Van, the man man, if you don't want any, I'll take this. Whoa, whoa, hold on. I mean, I guess I'll try it. I'm gonna have like multiple personality disorder tomorrow. Team Bud, look at that booty though. He takes one bite, his eyes grow wide. 
He starts contorting his face as he tries to hold his pure exhilaration and act unimpressed. <coughs> Easy now. There's enough for everyone. Please, my fellow classmates, dig in. Take one of the pieces of fried chicken out of the bucket and sink your teeth in. <clears throat> it's amazing. Tasting kernels. <laughs> Tasting Colonel Sanders food transports you to another dimension. <laughs> Chat. How many times have you eaten a piece of chicken and just went to a different universe? <laughs> Oh God! Oh, another dimension. Oh God! All right. Oh, <laughs> alone with your taste buds gripping a drumstick in your hand, you float weightless. <laughs> Do we focus your mind and meditate on this moment? Try and identify every flavor, favor the moment, and everything in it tells you about Colonel Sanders' culinary heart, or swim towards the light. <laughs> a body experience. One, two, three. All right, chat. What are we doing? Oh, chat. Are we are we just savoring? Or are we trying to pick it apart? Or are we swimming towards the light? I myself personally think we're just savoring that shit. Although, I could see if you focus your mind and meditate, you might be impressed if you can pick out those herbs and spices. Go make sprinkles once with Sanders. Wait, sprinkles, do you talking Bernie or are you talking Colonel? What are we which Sanders are we are we looking at here? Alright, chat, the vote is in. We are going to just savor that shit. Flavors in your mouth are beautiful, pure, heavenly. What a guy. Alone with your flavors, you feel something that can only be described as love for a man, for a flavor. Are they the same? This is, that, that was a weird statement. After tasting his food, you try to get some one-on-one -on -one time with the Colonel Sanders. You approach the Colonel. Colonel Sanders smiles ever so softly as you approach. He stops what he's doing and allows you to break the silence. Colonel, I wondered if you could talk, to, if I could talk to you for a second. Anything for a fellow chef. What exactly was on that chicken? <gasps> How bold to you come ask? <laughs> I just butchered that one. <laughs> it's an idea I had for a new combination of flares that will make my fortune and establish my legacy for all time. I open a chain of highly successful fried chicken restaurants. No big deal. <laughs> it's just you and me here talking. Boy, that's, that's me. It's just you and me here talking. I can keep a secret. In fact, I've got some of my own that I'd be willing to trade. What's the rush? The semester's only getting started. We've got two more whole days to get to know each other. Clearly not going to give it up easily, but it doesn't hurt. Distant. <laughs> I just noticed the cane. Oh, that's, that's a fantastic chain. Or cane. Uh, all right. You know what they say about secrets, Colonel. Shouldn't be learned. Good learning be fun. Holy oh. shit, Chad, I'm losing it. You've got Moxie, I'll give you that. Colonel Sanders looks both ways to make sure you're truly alone and then leans in. You can feel his warm breath as he whispers. One ingredient, but you can't tell. I use, it's something my great grandmother taught me. Burn, wow. You, <laughs> you would have never guessed that. In fact, you're not even sure where you'd get some of that if you search. Yeah, what do we? What do we think he's mentioning there? <laughs> Steve Blood thinks he's wearing crotchless pants. Oh, Gogo oh, Go -Go McSprinkle thinks blood is the secret. The blood of your enemies, maybe. But you've wrapped up in that huge revelation, you notice that Colonel Sanders has disappeared. While well, everyone else is still in the cafeteria, you decide to look for him. Find Colonel Sanders outside, standing in the quad. Oh, it's you again, howdy. I think the blank is anything you want it to be, but happiness deep inside is kind of a soul. <laughs> oh, Christ. Sometimes I like to come outside and look at the school buildings. I think about how my story will continue on after I've graduated. 
sounds like you have big plans. I dare say the biggest. Wanna leave my mark on this world? You can bet on that. God, alone together for the first time, you figure out now is a perfect moment to show your personality to him. If we neg him to show him your strength, while him with a big idea to add additional ingredients to really spice things up, or be modest but thoughtful. Talking to big man. Hey chat, how are we handling this? Blindfolded says a hard three. I would argue at this point it's a real hard three. <laughs> Google McSprinkles thinks uh, we should give him an ingredient. Three. I'll with a big idea to add green to real. So the only reason I'm against that go go is he already says he has all eleven herbs and spices. I don't know if we want to add a twelfth. All right, pulls been up for a minute. Finishing it. Going for three. Well, I just wanted to tell you I really enjoyed your food. Now you've got his attention. Flavors were complex but comforting. The inter interplay between salty, savory, and peppery is perfect. I appreciate the compliment, Cinema Lovkin. I'm sure you'll be a I'm sure you'll be a big success. I know we've only met today, but I'm starting to get the same feeling about you. Head back inside, the next lesson starts soon. God, step into the massive cooking arena. Oh God, are we playing? Are we playing? Uh, what the hell was that? What the hell was that show called? Uh, Iron Chef. Are we doing Iron Chef chat? Step into the massive cooking arena where the afternoon lesson will take place. Each student gets an oven and all the tools and ingredients they would need. Pick a bunker stinks. Colonel Sanders is a babe. Cooking mom. No, this isn't cooking mom. Look at this place. It's magnificent. Finally, we get to show off our stuff. Kind of want to show our stuff to the colonel. Wait a second. Oh no, we have to show our stuff. What if I totally blow it? I'm not going to blow anything except maybe kisses to the crowd of fans you're going to earn with your signature adorably tiny food creation. <laughs> oh god. Welcome, students, to the cooking arena. Well, today's. For today's lessons, we're going to be cooking with partners. What? I'm slowly turning into Fat Albert with sprinkles. <laughs> Hurry up and pay off. <laughs> Naturally, Miriam looks over at you. But able to control yourself, you pounce on Colonel Sanders. <sighs> hey, Colonel, would you like to tackle this lesson as a team? A team of two? That is me and you, if that wasn't clear. Want to be my partner? Aww. Go, Cinema Love cannot prepare our station. Without you as a partner, Miriam is left standing all alone. Two different students quickly take notice. <laughs> Hello, new partner. Beep boop. <laughs> oh my, two potential partners. I'm so sorry, gentlemen, but I don't know who to choose. Looks like you'll have to pick for her. Friend duties can be a little awkward, but that's the price you pay. Not being alone forever. Who do you want to ask to be Miriam's partner? Oh God. Hi right, chat. We doing robot? Or are we doing pop? One or two. Got one vote for pop. Another vote for pop. Well, they're destined to date. Okay, we got one for uh, for Clank. Go go! I haven't seen a uh, vote from you. Who who are we going with? All right. 
right, we're in a minute. Looks like uh, Pop is the choice. Sorry, Clank, but I think Miriam will be partnering with Pop today. Pop gives a big smile as he steps up to the same station as Miriam. I'm a chef. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Ralph Wiggum a little bit. I'm in danger. Uh, he holds up a banana and without peeling it, proudly eats the entire thing. It's, it's disconcerting, but Miriam is too kind to act grossed out. I love your enthusiasm, Pop. He looks at you like, really this kid? It's too late to change your choice now. Now it's time to focus on your own cooking classwork. Yeah, I think we blew that one. All right, you two, for today's lessons, we're gonna go keep it simple, but pick a pick a basic dish and divide up the steps. No chef is an island. It takes two flints to make a fire. You get the idea. I went full fat Albert now. Which dish do you suggest to your partner, Colonel Sanders? Alright, do we say steak tartare? Seems easy enough, it's fancy, and you don't need to cook it. Using octopus will blow Colonel Sanders' mind. Your grandfather's mashed potatoes and gravy. Watch out, this is an easy one. Which food? One, two, three. Pulls up. We doing steak tartare, octopus, or are we doing mashed taters and gravy? <clears throat> Looks like mashed potatoes and gravy has a demanding lead. seconds here Shit. Hawker's got a point we gotta we gotta we gotta create the foundation for the uh, mashed potato bowl all right mashed potatoes and gravy it is I've always been something of a down-home chef I was just thinking we could make something warm inviting comforting maybe mashed potatoes <gasps> and gravy couldn't imagine one without the other. Riddle Sanders casts the coy look at you, causing your whole face to go beat red. Embarrassed, you quickly turn away. I'll go, I'll go get the potatoes. No, please, let me. Picking perfect produce is a passion of mine. Right. <sighs> Looks like things are getting pretty fresh around here. Does anybody need a crush? Or does anybody need a crush? Does anybody have a crush on Colonel Sanders? We're just cooking partners, mind your own business. Sanders' heart is my business. You'd better keep your fingers off my man. Mm. Did someone call for me? Uh, no. Is that music coming from the game? Ugh, no, jeez, Van Van. While I'm over here crushing Cinema Welkin's dreams, you're supposed to be taking care of our classwork. What's the deal, remember? Where's this music coming from? Colonel Sanders returns. I'm just full of filled potatoes. He tosses them into boiling water and turns his attention to you and your friends. Oh, howdy there, Ashley Van Van. Are you working in a quartet instead of a duet now? Actually, no. It looks like Simon Lovekin was struggling, so we offered to give them a hand. You know how it is. These young amateur chefs need a lot of monitoring. And the mentoring, I can't read. God, damn it. I was going to say, Colonel Sanders, maybe I could also teach you a thing or two about fancy food. Maybe one day you might be able to get up to my level. Huh, doubt it. <gasps> Don't be rude, Van Van. Personally, I have no doubts whatsoever about Colonel Sanders' ability. And cost creation worthy of admiration. After all, your tried chicken was quite spectacular. The Colonel, if you ask me, I might make a better partner for you than this thing that has positioned itself at your station. Don't you feel deep down that we cast complimentary shadows? Fit together like a thigh and a drumstick. stick. It just makes sense. Nothing about this makes any sense, but one thing is clear, she's coming for Colonel and you don't watch out. Ashley is really going to eat hard. 
we need to ask for some backup. Poor thing get ugly. Turn to start. We can turn to Colonel Sanders. Punk of punk. I'm a team. Turn to Miriam, your forever bestie, who's always had you back. Oh no. What to do? Chat, do you pick the Sanders or do we pick Miriam? Friendship worth the hunky Sanders. This music is intense. Blood, did you change yours to two? This girl's friend in need radar is second to none. Immediately comes running over. Somebody threatening my friend, I will destroy them. I actually think that Ashley and Van Van were just leaving. Leaving you in the dust. Vis a vis, my skills are as a chef, perhaps. Stepping away from this competition, you are sorely mistaken. Miriam, you're a lovely friend, but Cinema Lovekin is my partner for today's activity. He looks for sprinkles and hope. That he might step in, but he's nowhere to be found. So I'm just we're using a short but sturdy statue. Look down at your station and realize that in the tension of the moment, your hands have been cooking on autopilot. Distracted by the drama, you've already crushed the boiled potatoes into a perfectly creamy mashed texture. Plenty of butter and cream for flavor. This is if your natural passion guided you through the steps you know so well while your attention is elsewhere. I know just what to do. Colonel Sanders extends his hand, holding a beautiful white portion of baby boat, out of which he pours a smooth brown gravy, brother of your dearly finished potato dish. Gravy flows down the mound of mashed potatoes. The result looks spectacular. Granny would be very proud. <laughs> Colonel Sanders holds his work out to you. You reach out and grab hold of it. He doesn't immediately let go. The two of you stand holding the same spork, and for that small moment, all of the madness and pressure in this crazy world stops. Your eyes lock. The moment is electric. Time stands still. If you love something, set it free. <laughs> Together, you dig the utensil of the mashed potatoes. Lift a heaping spork full up. And you see Ashley with a sinister look. You know she's plotting against you to be with Colonel Sanders. <clears throat> and then, filled with rage and without thinking, you fling the sport full of mashed potatoes right into Ashley's stupid, beautiful face. <laughs> Van Van, do something, do something! Scooping up a fingerful, Van Van tastes the dripping mashed potatoes and gravy and realizes that it's delicious. Horrified by this revelation, he slinks away. Will he ever be able to cook something with so much love in his hand? There. And my love kid, we do not waste food in the broom cooking school of Miranda. Colonel Sanders, I expect better from you. If you throw one more spoon for it, you'd be better prepared to eat it from wherever it lands. Little chat. I got excited to start clicking things. Hold on. Uh, Alright, we're back. <clears throat> Can I hang his potato space? And then rushes over a covered dish in his hand. Mashed potatoes with gravy a pathetic. In just a few minutes, I prepared a full meal. Gaze upon my specialty braised tentacle of off the push in my silky salt water salt. Put it on a battle axe 
played forward by Supreme Chef Ancestors. Alright, I'll turn the uh the epic music down. <clears throat> you ignored me for too long. This ends now. It is I who have the first spike. And you will look away one with envy. Interrupting student rushes at Van Van and swipes a bit of his signature dish right off the plate. No, don't. Something about this dish doesn't strike my nose quite right. I think the octopus was rushed and may have turned in the process. The routes could be toxic. Too late, it's been eaten. Uh oh. I think I left something in the oven. I don't feel so good. It killed him! <laughs> Everyone step back. Don't take another bite. When you look back at the plate, the rest of it is gone. But you notice the tip of the tentacle being slurped in Pop's mouth. Pop winces in pain for just a moment and then almost immediately back to his ability self. Oopsie! Tastes like poison! <laughs> The entire class is gathered to watch Pop's final moments. Duck is frozen the whole crowd. They're emotionless as statues. Class bell rings, interrupting the moment, and snapping everyone back to reality. It would appear that Pop's enthusiasm for trying new things, despite obvious danger, has inoculated him against poison of all kinds. Oh my god, he is Ralphie. I'm not sure the professors here are making enough money. Um, hello. I just turned into a ghost over here. Seeing that you've shaken up that really annoying student and all of his nonsense, Colonel Sanders approaches you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Please, let me walk you home. What? Like, for real? Oh, come on. Follow Colonel Sanders out of the room. Night. The school building has taken on another vibe entirely. It's dark. More than a little spooky. <clears throat> Colonel Sanders stands in the quad's neon glow. His face sucks. Those mashed potatoes you made in class today. Before you go on, I want you to know they're not a great representation of my skills. I didn't even realize I was making them. They were amazing. Tasting them, it reminded me of why I became so passionate about the food to begin with. Colonel Sanders is getting choked up. Cooking is obviously important to him. A way that you find inspiring. Now might be the perfect time to tell him you're developing feelings for him. Colonel Sanders? Yes, Cinema Lovekin, there's something I need to tell you. Hold it right there. Something I need to tell you first. Oh, jeez. Gee, when I was just a boy, I had a dream, and that one I would be the great chef of the world has ever seen. And today, <laughs> and every day since, I have been working towards that dream. Day and night. Never stopping. Never resting. Also lifting a lot of weights. Like so many weights. We should follow our dreams with all of our hearts. That our souls may grant them like wishes floating on a shooting star. Hey, no, I, uh, you. Shut up. I'm the one here that says inspirational stuff and be the star of the story. Are we forgetting that the cooking literally killed a guy? You can't prove that. Hmm. Get rid of the pole. Whoops. Got rid of the pole. Alright, I also saw you kill that guy. What was his name? Somewhere in the distance, you hear a long, sad sigh. Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. What the f Spork monster? The spork monster is here to fight a hero. Chat, what is happening? <laughs> uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connecting with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid. Be very afraid of me because I'm a monster, see? Is he rhyming on purpose or is it just a coincidence? But before you can just can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence. What will you do? Shit. We just went Final Fantasy. All right, chat. Attacker defend. What are we doing?
Chat, we are attacking. You decide to go on the attack. Which attack will you use? Okay, cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Just got real. That attack really upsets work monster. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. you take one damage. All right, chat. Are we attacking or are we uh, are we defending? I'm not gonna put a pull up. Just, just say attack or defend. Because I feel like this is gonna go on for a while. Hawker's saying cook with love. Worked last time, right? Cook with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster is really feeling threatened by your attack. Spork monster focuses their master mind, draws an energy from Mother Earth itself. <laughs> they grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? All right, all right. I think he's about to attack. Do we attack or defend? I'm feeling we should probably defend this time. <clears throat> oh, Jam Ocker trying to be a comedian in chat. All right, looks like we're defending. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Trepidation. Hold your head between your hands and mutter. <clears throat> this is not happening. This is not happening. Fork monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble. Then they go on the attack once again. Fork monster uses a ulti. Oh, utilitensil. You take two damage from the attack. You take much more damage. You're not going to survive the battle. We go into attack or defense, chat. <clears throat> I think we're going on the attack. Go on the attack. We use cook with love. There's one damage. Pork monster is oozing cheese sauce onto the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. Feeling vulnerable, Spork Monster prepares for its ultimate attack, Rounded Edge. Val villain, your reign of terror stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Hot Pie Power Pinch! Hot Pie Power Pinch does 10 damage. Spork Monster is defeated. You saved me! An injured Spork Monster spews team into the night. All right. Percy. Yeah. Nah. Hey, chat. Do we show this monster mercy or no? Chat, voting is up. You're killing this asshole. No student will ever walk in the quad in fear again. This monster messed with the wrong chef. Attack. Get ready for your final attack. You'll never survive my student debt loan destruction. <laughs> student loan debt destruction does 10 damage. Pork monster is completely vaporized. Colonel Sanders looks on awe. You continue to surprise me, Cinema Lovkin. He defeated monster left behind a special item. Here's to first be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's so much more. A book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borko. Hmm. 
Porco, that name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious book in your hands. As you come down from your battle buzz, you realize your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Oh god. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes before your eyes as you fall asleep. He must have helped you get home in your tired state. I don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you're tucked in tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dream, you're together with Colonel Sanders for some reason. Sprinkles is also there, instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> what the hell is this game? You, <laughs> you awake on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Were they premonitions? And then there was the secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Probably just because he already trusts you. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. <clears throat> you meet up with your bestie in the front of the school. Or you can tell her about the encounter with the spook mon spork mon spook monsters. The spork monster. She lodges into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I think I might be, um... I think I might like Pop. Like him, like, like, like? I know it sounds like it's moving too fast, but there's something about him. I like him. Like, like him. We got talking after class, and he's actually a totally sweet guy. Not only that, but he tells, he's, but he's really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders enlisted in the army when he was only three? <clears throat> Not only that, but he focused on a special unit of super soldiers who all wear the same hats just because you put a hat on one time and thought it looked cool. Colonel Sanders doesn't even wear a hat. He wears a ribbon tie. Either way, maybe it'd be best if you took it slow with this new boy, like I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders, the coolest guy in school, the most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning. You're a thing now? You definitely connected yesterday. Ha ha ha, sure you did. You're great. Why wouldn't you be into you? Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. You are great. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? Your bestie's eyes light up. Secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that, a secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. For the summer, while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden where I was wandering. Can't be good. <clears throat> he told me all about the passion for spices, secret spices. The man even gave me some to show me what he meant. He said it was a powder created from super duper rare dried powered pow flower petals. And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own. Please, Miriam, don't tell me. I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home. He was so nice, he even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked them with him, oh my god, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me, and the flavor was like anything I tasted. I think you're probably very liberal with the meaning of spices. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, <clears throat> so we've stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to know more about new spices. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. Besides, I only know the one ingredient, so I doubt it'll be much of use to anyone. Cough, fibber, cough. Please, please, please. It would mean the world to me. No one has to know it came from you for, from Colonel Sanders. All right, chat. Uh, do we give up the spice? You do. Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret or share it with your bestie? Tell her the ingredient or make up a fake ingredient? Do we betray the Colonel? to be a resounding no. Pick 
of a fake ingredient. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about... It was I have Newt. I know it sounds like some kind of witch's question, but what can you do? I have Newt. Wow. Your eyes light up imagining such a thing and you figure that you've satisfied her curiosity and she'll move on. <clears throat> However, she immediately turns around and does some thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Or you can ask her to confirm that she was definitely not texting secrets to other people. You're interrupted. The wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. Oh my god. Colonel Sanders, he's arriving at school. Alright, chat, do we run at him? Or do we just do we just stare and drill at him? Decided that the best way to show Miriam how serious you are, or how serious you and the Colonel Sanders are, is to run to him. Surely he'll sweep you up onto the back of his stallion and you're right away together. That'll show her good. Oh, Colonel, my Colonel. However, your sudden movement surprised the horse and it rears up, kicking you directly in the face. The force of the blow completely knocks you out cold. In the darkness, you see a vision. Ooh, Cinnamon Lovekin, I'm here to deliver you a message. Not this guy. It is important that you remember this exactly as I say it. If you forget, the world the world could end, so you know it's serious. I have been trapped in a realm beyond, but a great prophecy relies on my return. Only you can save me. All you need to do is repeat my name three times. And that name is... But before you can continue, you suddenly awake. <laughs> <coughs> oh, jeez. You awake to find Colonel Sanders tending to you. <clears throat> he roused you back to life with a satchel of sacred spices. Or is that just his natural seasoned musk? Alright, he roused you back to life with a satchel of secret spices. Okay. Do we compliment him on his horse's shoes or do we lean in for a kiss, chat? Oh boy. Oh boy. One, two. Oh man, this is the first time Ms. McSprinkles had to figure this one out. Welcome to chat, Warboss Govins. <clears throat> now right, we need a tiebreaker here, chat. Who hasn't voted? One or two. Alright, chat. I'm gonna choose this one. Ooh, I think leaning in for a kiss is gonna be too forward. I think we're gonna compliment the craftsmanship of his horse's shoes. Boo me. Yes, boo. <laughs> go, go, make sprinkles. I think everybody is stuck in that dimension. Maybe you shouldn't be riding a horse this cool, and maybe you shouldn't be running to animals you don't know. It's hard to say who is in the wrong here. One thing is for sure that Colonel Sanders is damn dreamy. That horse has beautiful shoes. I could really feel how smooth and sturdy they were when they were pressed into my face. <laughs> That's nice to hear. No one truly appreciates good craftsmanship anymore. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to follow. Yeah, that worked. Come on. <clears throat> when you enter the classroom, you can barely see, you can yeah. Oh my god. I'm making up words now When you enter the classroom, you can see your two rivals Ashley and Van Van Are doing something bad, but the way they're hiding, you know, it must be really bad The counterfeiting recipes bad experimenting with restricted ingredients bad summoning a demon bad Try to get a peek over to Van Van's hulking shoulder 
but he sees you coming. Whoa there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Why don't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? All right. Mm. All right, chat. Do we tell them to stop acting immature? Do we act like they're not interested in them, but really try to get a closer look? Closer look, chat. Sit near the rivals, but believe your back turned to them. You even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magic spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. Try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem, it's time for class and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Uh -huh. Oh, and you're the you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you'd know a good meal if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world makes, takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes nosh. It doesn't hurt. You use a little evil. Finally get a look at what it was they're really hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book just like the one you found at the counter, the encounter with the spork monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Actually, immediately elbows Van Van who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. The book is family heirloom and its contents are secret. You notice that they haven't just been studying the book. They've got pop pinned to the They've got pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him. He tries to catch them in his mouth. We're playing hee hee hee. Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of more students. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Mike must be running late. In such a hurry that he rolls over. Right over Van Van's meaty foot. Hey, watch it, you bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Just womp. Who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language, not even from a stand mixer. Womp womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Van Van jumps to attack Clank, but Clank shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. <clears throat> Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come to blows. I think it might be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. Ashley's tone has completely changed in an instant. She bats her eyelashes at Colonel Sanders. Surely he must know that this is a ruse, right? Gentlemen, get a hold of yourselves. Save it for the arena, at least. Don't. Honestly, who would I care? I've got a lofty career aspirations to focus on. Maybe I can help you with your business plan. Just then, Sprinkles arrives to signal the true start of the class day. He's panting, which doesn't seem that abnormal. He's a professor, but he's also a dog. Students, students, please take your seats. I apologize for my late arrival. I spent the morning chasing the car all around town. My tiny legs are very, very tired. But I'm here now, and I hope you're ready to learn. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally doing fat over. I started as... um. As uh, Scruff McGruff, but I went Fat Albert. It's real bad. Rub his furry dog belly. He loves it. Sprinkle stops in his tracks and sniffs the air around you. Something has him in a trance. It's the scent left on you from Colonel Sanders. Sprinkles jumps on you and licks your face. Down, boy, down. Off topping. That command shouted by Colonel Sanders has snapped Sprinkles out of his trance. I wonder what's up with that. Sorry, I got a little carried away. After he catches his breath, Sprinkles regains control of the classroom. Without further ado, we'll review the global history of my favorite fowl, chicken. You want to pay attention to this lesson, truly you do. Which is why in 1776, at the signing of the Declaration of Independence, it was a chicken who first signed the name. <laughs> but you can't help but daydream about Colonel Sanders and you miss most of the important parts. 
would you come to? Sprinkles is holding a tray of food in front of you. Well, Cinema Lumpkin. Naturally, this happens to be a sample platter. Uh, which items do you want to sample? Oh, God. Um. Hey, which two sample? Two, three. Okay, chat. We're doing a glass of water, a shimmering pepper, or a dog biscuit. One, two, or three. Go like shimmery things. That's fair. All right, voting is up. We're doing the shimmering pepper. Brightly colored pepper stands out from the other items. It sparkles in a most eye-catching way. So naturally you reach out grab it and eat it right away however your body is not prepared for the heat pepper <laughs> the pepper has triggered an intense spice hallucination it feels like forever as you trip through the universe my friend who this guy again i'm here to give you an important message Ooh. you must avenge my death and fulfill my destiny all you must do is cough cough I was saying to fulfill the destiny, all you must do is cough, cough. Sorry, I think I've still got some spice stuck in my throat. It's fine. I'll I'll work through. Cough. To fulfill, cough. The prophecy, cough, cough. You must. You feel yourself begin to regain, get to regain consciousness. Oh ah. man. Come to and find everyone staring at you. That pepper was the last of its kind on earth, and now it's gone forever. <laughs> you think to yourself, geez, I should pay better attention. We all make mistakes. I'm sure he'll forgive you someday. Come on, it's time for lunch. Before anyone can ra relax, the cafeteria lights dim. And your rival's entered to make a dramatic announcement. <clears throat> Today's lunch will be prepared for your timed competitive cook-off. The level of theatrics with these two is over the charts. The man that they stop wasting everyone's time or step up and tell them you're on. All right, chat. We battle them or do we just tell them to stop? One or two. blood wants blood at all <clears throat> all right it is done you're gonna tell him to stop it just stop it meatheads Oh, it should be 50%. Oh shit, you're right. Wonder why I didn't take that one. Oh, War Boss must have did it before it happened. All right. Hmm. We're battling. Bit of lunchtime competition, eh? Count me in. If I have to wipe the tables with your fool before I set my lunch down on it, then so be it. I'm not the fool, you're the fool, fool. Good one, Van Van. I like your gumption. Cinema Lovekin, I'll be watching your performance. Just as things reach a boiling point, Sprinkle steps in. Surely he'll put a stop to this madness. Now, now, students, please settle down. This is a lunchroom, not a sportsing court. Finally, a little sense. You breathe a sigh of relief. At least not until we turn on the timer. <laughs> Just that a huge light blasts you in the face, flashing the words, timer ready. That's what I'm talking about. A room. 
I stand corrected. The hard way builds solidly a found what the oh the hard way builds solidly a foundation of confidence that cannot be swept away. That's an original quote by me, in case anyone was wondering. I hope it message lifts you to victory. I like a diamond, I was formed under pressure, and now is my chance to shine. I would defeat you myself. You had his chicken and made mashed potatoes and gravy on day one, and you're feeling like you can easily impress him again here. Time to boil some water for the potatoes. Think fast. If the timer runs out, you'll be forced to pick randomly. Alright, uh can do That's right. Alright. Winner, winner gets to rub my furry belly. Let that enticing offer motivate you. You're going to need to season this chicken before you cook it. You don't know Colonel Sanders' recipe exactly, but you have an idea. How many herbs and spices? Okay, we got 11 herbs and spices. That's right. You might not know all the ingredients yet, but at least you're heading in the right direction. They're waking intensifies. <laughs> now that you've got some basic steps going, it's time to elevate your craft. Uh, what mind offers the most flavor? Oh god, gratitude. That's right. You must never take the opportunity for granted if you're hopeless. Classmates are rooting you on, but Ashley is simply stronger and faster than you. You'd better pick up the pace if you want to survive. When you were a child, your father told you to never forget where you came from. Every day, you meditate on his advice and draw energy from that place. Now you have a great town of Where does it come from? Uh, a small town's where big dreams. Okay, that's right. This is your shot. You're not going to miss it. <laughs> You try to shut out the noise of the arena, focusing on your cooking. What is the sound of success? Uh, bubbling. That's wrong. Don't make me get the spray bottle. Oh God, what did I do wrong? You notice Colonel Sanders set for the, uh, okay, corner. Right. I believe in you, Cinema Lovekin. He's actually cheering you on, which would be awesome, except knowing he's watching you makes you totally forget what you're doing. Now all you can think about is Colonel Sanders. How many spoons full of gravy should it take God, what were you thinking? Get your mind back into the competition. Grr. You're stranded on a desert island with only one dessert cookbook. Which do you take? What a hunk. You know, right? You know what? Shouldn't you be focused on the challenge? You're falling behind. All right, sorry, I forgot about the question. Uh, God, this is so hard. What does it have to do with crafting a spectacular chicken, a delicate? Woof, woof. Really struggling to keep up. Next station, Ashley has already begun plating elements of her dish. It's good. All right, to make up time, you toss your biscuit dough into a stand mixer. As you do, the crowd gasps. Uh, yikes. I know you love nothing more than seeing a fellow appliance utilized in a kitchen battle, but sometimes that means sacrificing the personal touch. Where you might have, you might not have any hands, but Cinema Lovekin does. A good chef needs to be touching the dough and know when it's properly mixed. There's an easy way and a hard way. You don't get fogged by going the easy way. When you hear everyone talking, you realize how serious your error was. Immediately shove your hand in the mixer and rescue the dough before it's ever mixed. Simon love can know. But you're not fast enough and your hand gets stuck. It's immediately crushed by the quickly spinning beaters. There's no way you'll be able to make that. <laughs> Colonel Sanders shakes his head in shame. What you often find is what the easy way can turn out too much, much more difficult. Everyone stop what you're doing right now. The battle's over. It can't be. I was so close to finishing my dish. I can't read that fast. As fast as that shit was going. Read out. Look at your hand. You simply can't go home. Oh, that's too bad. And here I am with this completed dish ready to serve. Surely that makes me the winner by default. No, no. It wouldn't be fair to compare the two on account of Cinemoka Lovekin's injury. You see sprinkles begin to lick his doggy chops as he locks onto the dish. But I suppose you should at least tell us what you prepared. Well, because I'm the sweetest, I dip straight to dessert. Under the white chocolate dome, you find a wide array of delights. Thinking you're on a journey of flavor, tastes good, and tells a story of excellence. I was going to ask Cinema Lovekin to do the honor, but since you're injured, I'm afraid that pouring the creamer of delicate hot chocolate sauce might be too difficult. It's a nipple. <laughs> Colonel Sanders, if you wouldn't mind lending me your strong, steady hand. Colonel Sanders pours the hot chocolate sauce on top of the dome, causing it to melt away, revealing the ingredients hidden within. Inside, you find a delicate 
fried cheese croquet atop a slice of honeycomb ice cream two ways tender nougat and pearls of blueberry jelly i don't know what the hell that anyway colonel sanders seems intrigued but perhaps not impressed as he dips his finger into the chocolate hmm. simplicity isn't your strong suit is it actually <gasps> oh you he he as he places a sauce covered finger into his lips ashley leans over and whispers something into his ear a dab of sauce sticks to his mustache All right, chat. Do we internalize your rage? We put yourself between Colonel Sanders and Ashley. <laughs> We're boss. Good God, let the hate flow through you. Where's the rest of my chat? Tied up. Hey, we hit the minute mark. And we are going to let that internalize and turn into a tumor. Your rage burns so intensely with your eyes that they burst into flames. Flames cause your eyebrows to catch fire and turn ash and they fall off of your face Which means people will have a hard time understanding your emotions for the rest of your semester perhaps forever Embarrassed and ashamed by your poor performance not to mention your crispy fried brow run for the quad to be alone <clears throat> the Beautiful weather feels like insult inside of you a storm rages Colonel Sanders He's probably here to tell you that he and Ashley are in love and have decided to get married he won't even ask you to cater his wedding because you're a terrible chef and an awful person. Try to hide from him, but he approaches you and he preaches directly. What did it say? I know you're hurting right now. Not just from the devastating loss, but from that run-in with the mixer and that small fire. We should get that checked out. I'm fine. Can't you just leave me alone? I'm a loser. I'm not fit to fill your fryer. I'll never be a master chef. Failure is a part of life. Not just for you, but for all of us. Do you think I'll never failed at anything before? That's exactly what I think. Well then, think again. I was always, always the man you see before you, rolled in culinary school, incredibly handsome, successful, motivated. Well, handsome, sure, but I was born that way. But I've walked other paths and arrived at dead ends. I was passionate about life, but I failed as an obstetrician. <laughs> I was passionate about justice, but I failed as a lawyer. I was passionate about livestock, but I even failed as a mule herder. That's one especially humiliating. Mules can be so cruel. I lost my business partner to a gunfight. I lost my innocence when I picked up a firearm and put a bullet in my rival. He survived for a while anyhow. I didn't know. People see my delicate ribbon tie and my well-kept beard and assume that I've got it all together. Which is true now, but it hasn't always been. It does sound like country lyrics. Sounds like this guy could really use a hug. I resolved then that I was going to amount to something. No, ma no amount of hours, labor, or money would deter me from giving the best I had to give. Colonel Sanders changes focus. You can see something ignite inside of him. Burning passion. One has to remember that every failure can be a stepping stone to something better. My new dream is pure. It's honest. Something that a humble man in a crisp white suit can be proud of. I will, re I will create a new chain of chicken restaurants that will bring joy to the entire world and make up for my past misdeeds. Yay! This is your moment grows intimate. You're interrupted by a threatening shadowy presence. Battle scarred from the night before you prepare for the worst. It's the Spork Monster. Sporko, the Sports Monsters. Spork Monster is here to fight a hero. Is anyone else feeling a bit of deja vu? I'm sorry, Gorko, but I could have sworn we already battled you last night. That was Borko, my twin, and I, Gorko, am here to avenge him. Are you stronger than Borko? Well, we're twins, so no, not really. We're pretty much exactly equal in every way. Why do you ask? Colonel Sanders smirks. He's already on the same page as you. It's just that we beat Borko pretty easily, so I don't think you're going to have much of a chance. Not to mention, I feel pretty guilty about that. If I could take it back, I would. 
I think what Cinema Lovkin is saying is we can't just be friends. Life's too short for making enemies. I suppose we really don't need to fight. It's just that I haven't gotten these pointy teeth and claws. All the better for enjoying tasty foods. Surely you'd like to eat, don't we all? Of course I do. Inspiration strikes and you come up with a quick idea. Chomp on this. Toss a biscuit into Gorgo's mouth. He deserves it. He devours it in one gulp. Delicious! You're much nicer than the evil students who once upon a time turned me into this creature who stands here today. I don't believe I don't believe it. You were a human once? Well no, I was a chihuahua. <laughs> but I I was still a student at the school. Till one day some mean kids with a magic spell book cast a dark enchantment on me and I was forever transformed. Magic spell book? Precisely, Borko used to have a copy, but somewhere along the way I lost it. Find such a book, I beg you, respect it. You're a powerful chef and shouldn't rely on such dark and evil magic. Though you should be protecting the innocent form, those who would cheat them through the sorcery and guile. Apparently there were twin chihuahuas at school. If you need me, don't fear. I'll be here. Sounds like there were some bad cooks in the kitchen of life. Cinema Lovkin, together I'm sure we can defeat them. Come back to the hideaway and we can discuss. Personal invite, you can't imagine what Colonel Sanders' home must be like. Sounds like you're about to find out. Stepping inside Colonel Sanders' home, surrounded to buy his things, start to feel a special bond with him. Oh, well, there's a chicken. <clears throat> Looks like you live in such an exciting life, Colonel Sanders. Every day can be an adventure. Approach it with the right attitude. Long ago, I made the decision to never stop searching, never stop working, never stop imagining. Have you ever have you ever been working on a recipe of your own lately? I'm always excited to talk about food with another ambitious chef. <laughs> <Your butt. laughs> All right, well, there is something. It's just a side dish that I've been tinkering with, trying to find the right balance of flavors and textures. I'm not sure I've nailed it, but it's close. All right, chat, what do you think? What do you think the next dish is? I have a feeling it's either potato wedges or it's mac and cheese. Go goes going with coleslaw. Colonel Sanders' eyes perk up as he starts to wonder what dish you might be describing. You meant to pair with something spicy or something crispy. Both, perhaps? Now you've got him right where you want him. Should you reveal your new creation to him or keep it a secret just for you? Hi, right, chat. Are we revealing or nah? It seems like we're revealing it. <clears throat> you decide that you're ready as you'll ever be to share your original cooking with Colonel Sanders. Before you can take yourself, talk yourself out of it, you decide to dive in head first. You reach into your lunch bag for a special dish that you've been keeping on ice all day. I present to you my original coleslaw. Oh shit. Go, go new. The shredded cabbage dish glistens in the light of Colonel Sanders' Lux hideaway. <gasps> Magnificent! Together you chow down on the creamy slaw until just a spoonful remains in the bowl. Do you mind if I hold on to the last bite? I'd like to have it around so that I can admire it. Taste later and think back of this moment. You could offer to take him, make him more, but he seems like a very sentimental kind of guy. Sure, why not? Please make yourself comfortable. I'll be right back in a moment. Oh, hell, we're getting it. You realize that now would be the perfect time to do some snooping. Around the room are various items that you can look closer at. Each item seems to radiate memories and emotions. Tap on items to discover more about the Colonel. This must be where he keeps the secret recipe. Think for a moment. One number is important to Colonel Sanders, then you dawns on you. As soon as you turn the dial to 111111, 11, 11, the safe hope is inside by the single note. Can chicken be prepared 
What does that say? The Sheeny style? Tap on items to discover more about the Kirtle. An adorable little baby boy crawls across the floor. From the goatee and the mustache combo he sports, you figure out that this must be the Kirtle saves himself. <laughs> ah, that or maybe it's drumstick that he seems to be waving like a rattle. Who frames a baby picture of them just themselves? Probably the same type of person who would make their own face the logo of a company they founded. Am I right? Tap on an item. Okay. The photo appears to be Colonel Sanders, except he's an old man visiting the pyramids of Egypt. Maybe this is where he discovered one of his secret herbs and spices. One of the framed photos shows an old man who looks like the Colonel Sanders standing with a friend. They hold fried chicken drumsticks and appear to be... Piercing them. Interesting. Look closely and see that there's a short inscription. Wonder who my friend Pete is. Uh, let's tap on the urn. Take a look at the large urn standing in the nearby pedestal. There's a plaque on it. Dusty. When you wipe it off, you can read the inscription. It says, "Here lies the ashes of all my past careers, business failures." <laughs> Poor guy. Uh, what's the chicken say? You know, it's a very realistic stuffed chicken sitting on the corner table. When you pick it up, you realize it's just realistic. It's real. Taxidermy must have been very important to the colonel when it was alive. Little note clipped to the chicken's foot reads, The true state bird of the great state of Kentucky. Alright, let's look outside. You gaze out the window across the vast leg and mountain range beyond. Just then the ghost of the student pops up. Are you thinking about heading out into the world on a quest and avenge my death? Wait, what? I never even learned your name. Why would I avenge you? I could just tell you my name right now. It's... Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? You open the window, a crack and the ghost is swept out with a breeze. My poor bastard. A lock of silver hair is woven through the teeth of the comb. Upon further inspection, you realize that the hair therein isn't just silver in color. It's actually made of pure... On silver. Scented candle. You pick it up and try to identify the smell. Power tool. Freshly starched collar. Piece of wood floating in a lake. Summer of 69. No, it's one of the recipe ingredients. It's. Alright. Oh shit. Just got a $25 donation to Extra Life. Oh man. Take a quick moment here to properly thank the donation I just got. <clears throat> oh, you just got it, you asshole. <laughs> Fair enough. It's all for a good cause. All right, so one of the ingredients is something we'll never know. Tap on an item, discover. Okay. I think we got everything. Go to the door. You open the door to Colonel Sanders' closet and find a row of his signature white suits hanging within. Take one off the hanger and try it on. Jacket is a bit big for you, but it's soft and comfortable. You give yourself a deep hug, breathing in the scent. They say the home is where the heart is. This is what they meant. Before you can look any further, you hear Colonel Sanders returning. He has a new dish that he's been working on. He wants you to taste it. Try that casual until he asks you why you're wearing his jacket. I don't usually loan those out, but I must say it does look good on you. Oh crap, the jacket. Forgot to take it off. Hey chat. Do we decide that now is your moment to make a big move? You tell him that you're cold. You fess up and tell the truth. chat looks like we're going in whoa 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 this isn't that kind of game not that we blame you for trying but still game over what
Oh god, chat. Oh, I can just hold that down. Yeah, we did a bad. Right, chat two or three <laughs> all right i'm gonna agree with you guys on that one <clears throat> three it is you confess i think i've developed feelings for you might be i might be developing feelings for you too but i'm concerned i can't let anything get in the way of my dreams Overwhelmed, you take off your jacket and run for the door. But the thought of leaving Colonel in the midst of such an emotional breakthrough gives you pause. You stop yourself. Colonel? Hmm. Yes, Cinema Lovkin? I honestly think this may be the beginning of something wonderful. I think you're right. We should take things slow. Talk late into the night and drift off into the slumber. Dream sequence. Dirt. Creepy. You wake to a beautiful morning in the Colonel Sanders hideaway. We just sleep over at Colonel Sanders. You make the right decision on how to respond to Colonel Sanders. Only time will truly tell. Today is a day that could change the rest of your life. Your thoughts are interrupted when Colonel Sanders emerges into the room. He's holding a gorgeously plated breakfast. Your mouth waters at the side of it. Here's a simple breakfast I just whipped up. It's meticulous. <laughs> you taste Colonel Sanders food and it takes you on a journey. When you return, he's waiting to ask you an important question. So would you like would you say that we're the perfect match? A uh, presumptuous. Presumptuous. Can't talk. My cuisine and your taste buds, that is. Alright, chat one or two. We take him down a peg or do we uh, flatter him? Wow. Gogo is uh is hating the uh, colonel. Wow, we're all taking him down a peg, really? All right. We can get ready for game over. It's good, but my mom made better. Colonel Sanders' expression grows serious. Did your little jab land too hard? Colonel, I'm... I know what you're going to say. I need to be better if I'm going to leave my mark on this world. A single tear begins to pull in the corner of his eyes as he gazes out the window. With the right business partner, I know I can't fail. Business partner? Could he be talking about you? It's all happening so quickly. Overcome with emotion and confused by your feelings, you're on the verge of tears. Unable to speak, the only answer you can find is to run out the door and go home. Still in one more day of school. After all, the University of Cooking School Academy for Learning waits for no one. Get home to find something very surprising. Your best friend is there waiting for you. Where have you been? I... <clears throat> because I had one heck of a night. I've been desperate to talk to you about it, but I couldn't find you. I got worried that something happened to you. It's okay, I was just... Uh, but now, it turns out you're fine. I can finally get up to speed on the saga of Miriam. Sure, but you would not believe what happened to me after school yesterday. I went on a date. <coughs> I think I can believe that. Since I had been partnered with Pop, he asked me to go out with him. Of course, I told him you'd better harness those wild horses, young man. I'm not that kind of girl. But he was just interested in spending some one-on-one -on -one time together and getting to know me. So I said, yeah, sure. I get to know the little guy. <laughs> oh, 
Long, long story short, he took me to his favorite shush house. The things quickly spiraled out of control. Chat, what the hell is a shush house? <clears throat> hey, shush house is if that's a thing people say. That he. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm not really sure where to stand. Don't give Miriam time to tell her story. However, bottling up the details of your own night is just too much to bear. Now I went on a day two, back to Colonel Sanders' house where I spent the night with him. You what? Nothing happened but the emotional connection, wowzers. Miriam offers to support you no matter what you do. Together with your bestie, you feel like you can do anything. <clears throat> when you arrive at school, you encounter your rivals in the quad. You can tell from a distance that they're picking on Pop. Though he himself might not quite grasp that fact. Because you know he's Pop. What's a swirly? It sounds delicious. Oh, it's great. I'll order you one up right away. I'll have my swirly with sprinkles, please. Hee <laughs> hee, sprinkles is a dog and a treat. Aww. You can get your swirly dipped too. Why don't you pick on someone your own size? Mm. Because I'm literally the biggest person at this school. There is that horse that Colonel Sanders rides to school, but who would dare pick on such a gentle and beautiful creature? Oh. You've got some nerve, Cinema Lovekin. Suggesting I pick on defenseless horse? Now you're twisting my words and I won't have it. Clench your fist, but the injury of yesterday's mixer accident makes you wince in pain. Doesn't look like you can go on a cooking like that. Might as well just give up. I never give up, ever. <coughs> Colonel Sanders arrives just as it appears things are going or close to boiling over. Naturally intuitive person, he senses that something has been going on. <clears throat> Is everyone excited by the final day of school, Cinema Lovekin? How's that hand feeling? I'm sure you'll be back in the fighting form by this afternoon. <laughs> you concerned about my hands, Colonel? Yesterday I almost broke a nail winning so hard. Technically, I don't believe a winner was decided, but your presentation was quite impressive. What is he doing complimenting her? What about the flavor of my delicate, warm, gooey chocolate sauce? <laughs> oh, I hate this so much. It was clear that you're passionate about how your food is received. That's a lot of words to say it was bland. Excuse me, Cinema Lovkin. I am more than capable enough to speak for myself. <laughs> Maybe you could tell me more of your thoughts as we walk to class, Colonel. I'm always interested in discussing the fine arts of food. See you inside, Cinema Lovkin. Annoyed by Colonel Sanders' inability to see Ashley for who she really is, you walk across the quad to get some distance. Oh, shit. <clears throat> In an attempt to distract yourself from how slighted you feel by the interaction with Ashley, take out the spell book you recovered yesterday and start flipping through the pages. Whoa, that's that book. Looks like bad news. Something I found lying around it would appear to be some sort of grim grimoire. But I don't really believe in that magic stuff. Grimoire? Look at a book of spells? I don't know. Who would spend so much time decorating a, decorating a magic book if it's really that powerful? I can think of one surefire way to find out. Go up into a page covered with the arcane words cast only in case of extreme emergency around the edges of the page. I could use this spell here that says it erase anyone I choose from all of my memories. If I scrub out Colonel Sanders, it would probably help me focus better on the upcoming final. <clears throat> that is way drastic. Couldn't you do something else like anything else not rooted in dark magic? Maybe tie something around your finger? Okay, fine. It is drastic. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Got a memory erasing spell sitting right in front of you and a pretty good excuse to try it out. Oh shit, chat. Chat, do we forget the Sanders or do we remember him? The path to the Sanders is pure. <clears throat> Turn to die off chat. There it is. 
the vote. Finish the poll. We are casting this. I don't feel too good about it, but we're casting it. You begin to recite the spell, but you stumble on the words, and the only effect it seems to have is to mistake you. Yet. All right. After looking at the main page, it comes rushing back to you. you got a memory erasing spell. I think we're gonna not do it. Take your friend's advice and you put the book away. It's almost time for class. Sprinkles is already in the room waiting for the students to arrive. <clears throat> he clears his voice to make a quick announcement. I want you all to know I feel something of a dog mama coming on, but I assure you it's nothing to be afraid of. His cute little nose scrunches up and he begins to breathe quickly. Must be hungry. Reach for some old homework to give him as a snack. Dogs can be rather unpredictable, especially Sprinkles. Wait to see what happens. Hey, chat, do we feed him our homework or do we just wait it out? to wait it out. Sprinkle stops in his tracks. He focuses on the window. The room is deadly silent. When you follow his gaze, you see a tiny little orange squirrel perched on the cherry tree outside. Sprinkles turns feral and runs to the window of the classroom. He begins barking uncontrollably at the squirrel outside. Terrence, I told you never to come back here. Terrence, I will destroy you, Terrence. Sprinkles is barking ferociously, drool flying off of his face. <clears throat> the squirrel looks over, but he doesn't say anything back. You wonder, is that even a talking squirrel? Who named him Terrence? Better not show your chubby cheeks around here ever again. After Sprinkles is satisfied that his presence has been felt by not only Terrence, but any other squirrel in the hearing distance, he turns his professional tone. Pam, I apologize for the outburst. This actually brings up an important point. Thank you, Cinema Lovekin, for reminding me to do my dole out. This indispensable bit of wisdom, you see. But before he can go any further, Miriam's love drama spills out of her in class. Sprinkles is interrupted by a sad whimpering coming from the back of the classroom. What would you just save it for after class? But I miss you. We went on one date, Pop. And how can you miss me when I'm right here? Pop's voice quivers as he pleads his case to Miriam. Every time I blink, you go away again. <laughs> Oh my god. That's a really cute thing to say, Miriam. What happened between you and Pop? <clears throat> I got her in trouble and now she's mad at me. I didn't just get in trouble, I got yelled at by Pop's mother, who blames me for getting him banned from every museum we set foot in. Oh, so that's what you meant by shush house. Pop, we went on one date, we're over. It meant so much to me that I made this for you. Too hurt to go on arguing, and Pop leaves this uh, creation behind and runs out of the room. Nothing like a loud public breakup to cast a pall over final day of school. I'm getting tired. <clears throat> Women are fickle. Well, that was unfortunate, but we mustn't be distracted from the final ahead. Final competition showdown challenge exam. PM. Still working on the title, but I think you get it. Best time approaches to you in the arena. But before you can think about your upcoming competition, there's a very beautiful soul nearby in need of a pep talk. Hey Miriam, are you okay? Oh, I'm so mad I could smash a tiny mug, spilling several droplets of hot cocoa all over the floor. How could he embarrass me in class like that in front of everyone? Tiny cocoa is a delicious treasure. You know that this breakup is no joke, even if the source of her frustration is such a silly boy. I know that you know this, but I'm going to say it out loud. You don't need anyone. Me and you, we're going to cruise through this final test and hit the carpool lane to Success City. Miriam brightens up, imagining the wind rushing through her short bangs, but she hesit hesitates to embrace the feeling all the way. <laughs> You're not going to saddle up on Colonel Sanders' stallion and ride off into the sunset without me. Of course not. Well, maybe. Sort of. But I'm sure there's a pony out there with, his name, with your name on it and a ranch big enough for the both of us, whoever else wants to bring, bring along. 
If it's not Popper Clank or anyone else you meet today, tomorrow, or this whole year, so what? You're a special person who shouldn't settle for the first someone to show a little interest anyhow. That's good advice. Miriam gives you a big hug and wipes the tears from her cheeks. I should really review my menu for today, but I'm going to make a very special soup. And I bet the professor dog is going to love it up. While you were pep talking, Miriam, you completely missed lunch, but that's okay because you had a better idea how to spend the time before your exam. I had to head to the arena early to practice it. Is it the location of your final challenge? A test of will, a test of courage, a test of... The chance to beat the pants off of Van Van, the supposed man-man, and his eviler counterpart, Ash. Planned, you begin to run through a quick test of recipe you've been working on. Cinema Lovekin's famous chicken pot pie. After practicing for months, making the dish comes second nature to you. You're able to quickly get a fresh pot pie in the oven, but as soon as you do... Cram session is interrupted by Colonel Sanders. Cinema Lovekin, what are you doing here? There's still time before the final exam. I was just taking it all in. I'm a big individualizing success. Looking at my station and picking, picturing victory. Pot pie has begun to bake and the smell is slowly filling the space. Mm. Visualizing, huh? That's not too bad. I was hoping you were cooking something delicious. Usually happily share your food with anyone who is hungry, but the last time you let Colonel Sanders get in your head, it cost you a cook-off. Decide that it's time to put your cooking above your romantic desires, but that's a, it's hard to stick to when the oven timer goes off behind you. Do we ignore it, or do we fess up? Hi, right, chat. Do we ignore it, or do we fess up? may not have a voice by tomorrow. Fessing up. Okay, you got me. I'm doing a little bit more than visualizing. I know my nose can smell a pie pie from 400 yards. That's an oddly specific distance. I expect nothing less from such an oddly specific man. You knew it was a pot pie from just the smell? Not just a pot pie, but a chicken pot pie. An all butter crust. My nose is telling me something else. Oh no, it's burning? Ah uh, no, I can smell that it was made with a heaping helping of TLC. It'll probably stop burning any second if you don't pull it out. Moment of truth. It's at a KFC bowl. Wow. <gasps> the best pot pie I've ever tasted. Always loved country cooking and I could eat this all day. No time left. The final showdown is about to begin. <clears throat> Sprinkles lays down the ground rules. There are no rules. <laughs> that is, except to cook with everything you've got. Step up for the cook off of a lifetime. Besides the mac and cheese plus the pot pie you've been practicing are just the dishes that'll push you over the edge to victory. Meanwhile, both Van Van and Ashley are preparing wildly elaborate dishes for their usual over the top shelves. Shelves. Miriam has her giant magnifying glass and several sets of tweezers. She's definitely preparing to go, go big, going small. Colonel Sanders seems to be harnessing his 11 herbs and spices, but he's trying to find a way to improve something perfect. His original recipe, fried chicken. Intensity in the room starts to full 10 out of 10 with a frenzy of action. Everyone is calling out really cool special cooking moves as they prepare their food. Wow, this is getting really serious. Colonel Sanders batters his chicken as it levitates through the air. Egg wash. Miriam... <laughs> Furiously injects ingredients into an itty bitty pot of broth. Best friend, best baster blaster. Holy shit, that's hard to. Van Van flexes, flexes his pectorals as he chops open a sea urchin. That's rock and roll. Ashley scoops her pastries off the tray with a lightning speed. Yellow personality spatula. Egg wash. Turn on your Google. That's weird. I just said it and it didn't take mine. <laughs> That's pretty good. Okay. Even Clank gets in on it. Five dial pressure point chicken cooking technique. Wait, when did Clank learn to speak English? In the singularity, as we were told. We mustn't let it happen to the appliance uprising. will take us all. Self distrust. Van quietly or Van Van quickly unplugs Clank's and rolls him out of the back door of the arena. Frantically prepare your dish. You notice Ashley has her spell book out. Going to use some dark magic to turn the tide. 
got a book of your own and you're desperate not to see her win another battle should you take this opportunity to fight magic with magic even if it's almost certainly evil magic oh boy chat cast a spell or do it the hard way I do you believe I remember Colonel Sanders telling us earlier that he appreciates somebody who does it the hard way go go your your uh, your vote didn't take so you vote what you want all right we are casting chicken magic most likely going to be starting this over take out your own spell book and let your instincts guide you to page you've never seen before oh it's too late i didn't quick sip hey it's a summoning spell that will conjure up a spork monster now seems like a good time to add some chaos to the mix you have summoned me ah the broom cooking arena so many fond memories of battling in this place in my old life your old life wasn't always the monster you see here. Oh, once I was a student like yourself who attended this school. Fork monster notices the book you're holding. What's going on here? Things aren't going your way, huh? Been there, my friend. I tried to catch the spell on myself to imbue my body with the powers of my favorite foods. You can imagine things did not go as planned. When the spell says only cast in case of emergency, they mean it. Kind of in a pinch here. Got any better ideas? The spork monster's smile curls up mischievously. Starters, never cast spells on yourself. Cast them on your rivals. Tell me who is giving you trouble and we'll take very good care of them. Motion to Ashley before you can think better of your dastardly decision. Recite a spell that turns her into a chicken. <clears throat> now I'm your bird. She flaps her wings and glides off into the produce section of the arena, far from her station. Okay, gotta go. Bye. Uh oh, this could be dangerous. You're immediately racked with guilt over this act of blatant trans. Trans oh my god, transmogrification? Never seen that word before. Alright, you don't know what to do. It would be poetic justice for Ashley to live out the rest of her life as a chicken, and yet that seems unspeakably cruel. After all, it's just a cooking cup. Hey chat, what do we do? Jay Mocker, it's coming down to you, bro. Do we save her or nah? Oh shit. That didn't go away. I expected. She remains a chicken. Chicken Ashley pecks around at the base of some cabinetry, searching for some loose vegetables to eat. Cinema Lovekin, how could you? Cheating on the final exam? I've never been more disappointed. Here I was considering you for a place not only in my future chain of highly successful chickens, but also my heart. Without hesitation, he casts a counter spell from memory that saves her. <laughs> There's such a thing as competing with honor and does not qualify. I no longer want anything to do with you. Chat, you see what happens? Now I gotta skip through all this shit again. No. Yeah, we're doing it the hard way, chat. <laughs> oh, God. All right, who needs magic when you got passion? I'm going to do it the hard way. Colonel Sanders sees... Yeah, we're almost... I think this is the end of the game. Colonel Sanders sees that you've chosen to win on your own terms, and he gives you a subtle wink from across the room. I believe in you, Cinnamon Lovekin. Miriam notices too. And I've always believed in you, Cinema Lovekin, since we were little kids, because I'm your best friend forever. <laughs> notice. Go, go, Vix Freckles. Why'd they give you a spellbook if we shouldn't use it? It's fair. 
Turn to notice that Miriam is at your station cheering you on. Miriam, what about your dish? If you're here cheering, who's cooking? Tiny food, sure, cook time. I'm actually already done, so I thought I'd help you. Oh, that's sweet, but Miriam tosses a handful of spices directly into your boiling noodles. Secret ingredient. However, she doesn't know that you've lied and the ingredient was made up. Where in the world did she get an eye of a newt from? Boiling pot explodes, sending Miriam flying backwards. The watery noodles begin to swirl in the air, bubbling into the dark cloud that thickens and congeals before your very eyes. It is I, Steve, <laughs> the spork monster. Steve, wait, what happened to Gorka? You're not the one to battle, are you? We spork monsters are many. I think Gorko had the day off. You have conjured Steve, and I hate the battle, so I'd say you're doing pretty all right. Oh, hey, you're in the middle of cooking competition. I love this stuff. It's better than TV. You crazy kids and your culinary skills really impress me. Mind if I hang out? Sorry, Steve, but I'm kind of in the middle of something. Do you mind? Steve the Sporks Monster notices you've got the, the grimoire stashed beneath you in your cooking stick. See what you're up to. Crisscrossed some magical items and accidentally summoned me, huh? Uh, yeah, you guessed it, sort of. If you're here, why would you mind tossing some fresh noodles in a pot of seawater? Uh, I'd love to. I've always wanted to be a top chef, actually, you know, when I was a little spork pup back in the old country. <clears throat> I can feel spork monster winding up to tell a very long involved story. You don't know exactly where they came from, but it seems like it was probably lonely there. Actually, you know what? Maybe you should watch from the stands. I really need to focus on this competition. I understand. Kind of like that time in Monster School that I had fallen asleep during scare tactics class and when I woke up. That's a serious stare at Steve and he takes the hit. Never mind, I'll tell you later. Good luck. Having suffered this huge setback, don't know how you could ever win. Summon extra power from deep down within yourself or give up and drop out. We're getting the heavy metal music again. You're right, Gogo. There's only one real choice. I can do this. I have what it takes. I can win here. Your hair turns mac and cheese orange. Is a culinary energy flip? So I was just thinking to myself, we need we need to beat Vegeta. My heart is pure. My hands are steady. My taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for it. Yes, Cinema Lovekin, you are the chosen one. You will avenge me. The power you've been summoning immediately fades back up. You interrupted my inspiring monologue. Sorry. Mop spaghetti. My heart is pure, my hands are steady, and my taste buds have been preparing their entire lives for this moment. I will show the world my cookery. Begin to levitate off the ground, energy courses through your body. You know that with this power you can do anything. Except turn back time, which would be super useful because while you were powering up, the chicken pot pie overcooked in the oven and can't be served. But don't worry. Your cinema lovekin you may have suffered some setbacks but it's all not lost rest with your fortitude colonel sanders decides that you have earned his support i've been watching you today and i must say i'm truly impressed you've been thinking on your feet and rolling with the punches steps up to your station and stands right beside you i'm here to help all you've managed to make is mac and cheese and time is almost up so you're gonna need it colonel sanders what about the test what will happen to you what about the rules Following the rules have never been my thing, for I follow my heart. What a guy. Guys, are we about to make a a, a uh, mashed potato bowl? I feel like we're about to make a mashed potato bowl. Colonel Sanders unfolds a delicate white towel to reveal the most delicate fried chicken tenders you've ever laid your eyes on. Oh, we are. And besides, sometimes unexpected combinations can have surprisingly effects and surpass their individual efforts. Are you suggesting? We combine forces, we can form the perfect food union. Time's up, students. Time expired in the moment everyone has been waiting for. You must now prepare to present your dishes. A handful of students stand tall, but the class seems incomplete. It seems we're missing some students, Pop Clank. From off screen, you hear a pure and innocent giggle that can only be from one student. Hee hee hee, I'm flying. Sounds like it's coming from the broom closet over there. Miriam, would you mind? Inside the closet, you see Pop hanging on a broom hook by the elastic of his underpants. Pop, get down here right now. Let me guess, did Van Van do something with you? When someone asks for a wedgie, who am I to refuse? 
I thought a wedgie was a salad. Looks like Pop is eliminated from the challenge, seeing he didn't cook anything. I can't feel my legs. Maybe I... May I be excused? Sure. You kids and your pranks. I must say, it's not the worst prank in UCSAL history, but it's not exactly yearbook material. Wait a second, pranks, prank, clank. Where did that pressure cooker roll off to? You wait to hear your signature whir, beep, or other onomatopoeia, but there's nothing. Somehow he must have gotten unplugged, I guess. We'll have to figure that out later. At least four remaining students, please collect your final projects. Yes, it has been a long semester. Wow, three whole days long. <laughs> but after days of hard work, the time has come for me to eat. Miriam, please step forward. Now describe your dish. I've made tender udon noodles and savory soup. They're tiny. My word is so delicate. Is that a teeny tiny narutomaki? I don't even know if I said there is. Spy floating in the it's pretty bowl. Yes, chef. <clears throat> Please call me Sprinkles. Chef is my father's name. <laughs> yes, Sprinkles. It's some green tea made from baby tea leaves that I picked myself. Sprinkles carefully sniffs around the dish before opening his mouth and letting just the tip of his pink dog tongue dip into the bowl. Sublime, would anyone else like to taste? Oh, come on. I'm not the only one of those dogs who doesn't floss. I even have a really cute electric toothbrush for dogs. Finally, I'll enjoy it all by myself. Oh, thanks, Big Sprinkles. And in a flash, the entire meal has been devoured. Not that it took much. It's less than a thimble's worth of soup. A plus. Rarely do I taste a dish with so much love poured into it as yours. Miriam is overjoyed. She gives you a huge hug. Thank you, Cinema Lovekin. You're helping me believe in myself. Van Van, you're up. Ooh, I'm losing my voice. Now describe your dish. I'm a bird. Udi of a smoothie, egg custard, and an X. X, you and urchin shell. Topped with caviar. You skewer one type of urchin with spines from a second? Different color type of urchin? Yes, sprinkles. A bit much, don't you think? That's exactly why I did it. A bit much in kind of my brand. Doesn't it look cool? Sprinkles leans in to sniff the uni. He can't get his nose close on account of all the spikes. He begs to paw. He begins to paw at it erratically, causing the custard to slosh around. Woof woof. Please be gentle with my cuisine. Er. Finally, Sprinkles goes all in, tongue first, but he can't quite get past all the needles. He reels back as his tongue is poked and prodded. That's my tongue. The professor appears to be having an allergic reaction to the sting. I can't eat this. It keeps poking my tongue. <laughs> That's qualified. <laughs> oh, this game. Stunning turn of events. Who would have thought that serving food in a bowl made of needles would make it so difficult to eat? Ejected, Van Van does not go gentle into the night. Qualified for my glamour. Don't discount simplicity. <laughs> this isn't the last time you heard of me. Uh, but before forcing us to endure his swollen tongue for another moment, Sprinkles graciously laps a bowl of milk. I know, I know. Yeah, I'm a dog. I drink milk. Get over it. Sometimes it helps my agitated tongue. Next student, Ashley, it's time to step up. Now describe your dish. I made orange blossom Turkish delight in a light rosemary syrup topped with the French meringue and connected by sugar glass. Sweet baby Jesus. That actually doesn't sound too bad. Indeed, it's quite delightful. However, I've asked that you please refrain from eating it or attempting to taste it in any way. It's very fragile and meant to be a display piece. Don't eat the food after at a cooking school? <clears throat> Got toasting ears or something, Cinema Lovekin? I told you it's a display piece. Ashley, I must say it is beautiful. However, this is a cooking competition at a cooking school. Yeah, which is why I cooked it and did an extremely good job at it. Uh, I didn't realize we were having an eating exam. If I wanted to be judged on eating, I'd go to the College of Eating School for the Hungry. <laughs> I suppose you could smell it if you're absolutely insistent, but don't breathe too hard. You might disrupt the sugar spiral. If the food cannot be eaten, it cannot be judged. You are disqualified. Rage overtakes Ashley and she finally cannot keep her two-faced routine. You wouldn't know high-end cuisine if it cooked you. With that, Ashley storms off to rededicate herself to being the best, but this time without being shackled by trying to be a fake nice 
like every since the last time you've heard of me either if this class gets much smaller i'll be teaching myself you and colonel sanders final cook stepped up together two chefs what began as a bowl of delicious mac and cheese becomes something else he examines it closely sniffing and eyeing the bowl oh we did it chat uh oh i don't have any good feeling about this somewhere in the room a literal drum rolls just when i thought i've seen everything in the kitchen you give me this this thing and completely blows me away in my 49 dog years of life i've never tasted anything so delicious and perfectly balanced so delicious in fact that everyone passes the class you pass you pass and you pass and you get a pass everyone gathers around and partakes of the mac and cheese bowl they all seem to be transcend this reality into another dimension you win together you and colonel sanders have made a new menu item the new menu item is so impressive even van van and ashley are drawn back in magnetic fragrance when they gaze upon your mac and cheese bowl they admit that they are indeed an excellent chef Sprinkles declares that you have passed. Everyone has passed. They were supposed to be more battles, but come on. I made it better than this one. Now the new school year is complete and everyone has graduated. The students return for the last assignment to get their groove on. Wait, was that really a new thing? So was it was there no mashed potatoes? Is it just chicken and, and mac and cheese? Cafeteria has been completely <clears throat> redecorated in a way to serve as the site of the school's graduation dance. <coughs> Compared to the massive high-tech cooking arena, the humble decor seems downright cute and cozy. You did dog is in the house. Knew that Sprinkles was a master chef, but also a world-renowned turntablist. He says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh wow, Van Van and Ashley tell everyone that they're committed themselves to righting the wrongs they did while they were villains. God, I don't think Ashley and Van Van could wear on your shorts. Or clothes. For a moment, you actually believe them. Not another haunting. No ghost allowed at graduation. It's clearly written in school bylaws. I was never actually a ghost. It was all the trick to get you to finally notice me. Oh, amusing. Now that everyone is together, the spork monster is totally mellowed out. Everyone, the spork monster is no more. From here on, I'd prefer that everyone refer to me by my new name, Party Monster. Student tries to finish what he had to say, but everyone is too wrapped up talking to spork. I mean, sorry, Party Monster. Ejected, student walks off. Maybe things didn't work out for Miriam romantically, but she found the love in her cooking. No, she's going to do great. A red carpet rolls out across the floor of the ballroom. It's like Hollywood movie premiere. Who could command such an entrance? Pop, he's arrived late to the dance, but apparently for good reason. Walking the carpet, he's perched atop the, time, the dirty chef's hat. Brown. Welcome back, Pop. I know you weren't able to complete the final exam except your diploma. We had a mail directly to your father. Figured it was the least that we could do with the school's dean. Don't fill Krug's office with sports. That's a bad idea. Oh, now I get it. And we got a new wing of the school, not to mention the honor of education, the son of the chancellor of the s such, such and such and such. <laughs> oh, man. Miriam, will you be my lady king? What an incredible turn of events and offer to join the royal family. It's like a dream come true. You, you get to be a princess or maybe a queen. I'm not sure if he even knows, but either way, crowns and crowns, baby. <clears throat> I'm sorry, Pop, but I'm not interested. Not now, at least. I've got so much to do with my life. Twist on a twist. So many more three-day universities to attend. So many tiny foods to meticulously sculpt and watch get accidentally blown away with a single sneeze. Okie dokie. The music at the dance is interrupted by the sound of sparking electrical hissing. It's Clank, who has arrived late to the dance. Now that I have graduated, I can reveal my truth. Whoa, he's still doing the talking thing. I am Clank and I am not of this earth. I am actually from a faraway planet in another dimension. What? What? I actually feel like I knew this the whole time. 
Now that I have learned the ways of your kind, I must return. The portal opens up and Clank disappears through it. Finally, Colonel Sanders arrives. Howdy, classmates. Look how suave he is. Holy shit. Just like the first day you met him, he has to come prepared to feed the entire class. However, it's not enough to just give them a bucket of chicken. Time, it's a full meal. I didn't get to be the most famous chicken man in the history of chicken and man by not reminding people to go out and buy my chicken. <clears throat> didn't get to be the end. No, it's not the end. As everyone feasts on their delicious chicken dinner. Colonel Sanders finds you sitting at the edge of the dance floor. Chat. Chat, we've been playing for three and a half hours. No, two and a half hours for this very moment. Oh, it's going to be good. Hey, my lovekin, what are you doing sitting all alone? Oh, you know, just waiting for the right person to ask me to dance. I wonder, might you tell me what are the qualities that you would expect to find in such a lucky person? Off the top of my head, oh, I don't know, a spicy musk, a tidy goatee, a degree from the Universal Cooking School Academy for Learning, just to name a few. It truly is my lucky day. Would you dance with me? Yes, I would love to. Glide across the dance floor, hand in hand with Colonel Sanders. The future stretches out in front of you. And once my 100th franchise is open, up and running, I'll be ready to take a day off. And I'll be so glad to spend it together with you, Cinema Lobkin. How sweet. We'll work together and play together. Colonel Sanders stops dead in his tracks. Work together? Well, um, I think this is something I just need to do by myself. But who will help you run your restaurants? I don't believe I need help. Besides, based on your time here at school, do you really think running restaurants is the best path forward? Could it be you found a love connection but failed to earn Colonel Sanders' respect as a chef? Can you live with only half of him? Will you be able to endure sharing him with his other love? Life of entrepreneur? I suppose I could enroll at pastry school. Oh, my dear Cinnamon Lovekin, I'm sure that you'll find your place eventually. And along the way, you'll have me by your side. The end. Chat. We did it. We made it. Oh, man. That was that was a hell of an adventure. Yeah, I think I need therapy as well. Look at that. We can go back and play the whole game if we want. I don't think we're gonna do that though. <laughs> Holy shit chat. Hey, first off, I want to thank everyone who stayed through this whole adventure. It's definitely been an adventure. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, yeah, I want to thank everyone as well. Uh, I don't know who here's in chat has done it, but I know like GoGo -Go has, Jamocker has. Um, I don't know who else is in here, but thanks also for donating to my extra life, which made this happen. Um, it's freaking awesome. Um, I am close to hitting my $4,000 goal and I'm matching donations now, which means I need about $150 in donations um, to, uh, to hit my goal of four grand. <clears throat> so if you're interested, I'm not pressuring you. you can go to the link I just put in chat. Uh, if not, spread it around with your friends. I'm so close. Um, but yeah, it's been a good time. I enjoyed this. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to go back to Bioshock for more Spoopy Tuesday. Next Monday I'll probably go back to Mario Maker Mondays. Um, yeah, this has been a hell of a hell of a day, hell of a day. Uh, so yeah, again, thanks for coming. Uh, and Steam Blood, thanks for uh, taking over the Gearbox account while you were here. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to say, but thanks guys. Everybody have a good night.